9 day Greek Isle, Santorini, Mykonos, Florence and Malta cruise and in this video I will tell you all about the boat, the ports and throughout the video I will share some of the greatest tips for example in what ports you do not have to book the excursions on the boat speaking from personal experience you could either spend nothing or very little without sacrificing the quality <laughs> save yourself research and avoid many regrets so in this video we will visit Rome Santorini, Mykonos, Corfu, Malta, Messina, Naples, Florence. So we're starting our journey from Rome. Rome is believed to be founded in 753 BC by Romulus. And here we'll share with you some of the most interesting facts about the city. Rome had some of the most infamous rulers, notorious for their cruelty and debauchery. Any guesses? Nero must come to mind, but he was not the only one. We're going to start with Gaius Caligula. He did some very, very questionable stuff indeed. First of all, he appointed his horse as a senator. He committed an incest with his sister, back in the day who didn't, I guess, fed prisoners to wild animals and consulted the moon on most matters. Roman Emperor Nero is considered to be altogether the greatest criminal of history, or thereabout. His name has become synonymous with evil. As historical accounts take it, he is accused either directly or indirectly causing death of his stepbrother, his wife, his mother, not to mention great Stoic philosopher Seneca, who also was his tutor, as well as instigating the devastating Great Fire of Rome. In Rome, you'll probably see the symbol SPQR a lot, which stands for Senatus Populusque Romanus, which means the Senate and the people of Rome. As simple as that. So what to see in Rome? Modern Rome has 280 fountains, by some estimates considered to be the city with the most fountains in the world. The must-see fountain would obviously be 30 meter high Trevi fountain, perhaps the most famous fountain in the world. It's a beautiful Baroque fountain on the Piazza de Trevi. It was initially designed by Bernini, but too expensive, 50 years later was redesigned by Salvi to make it cheaper. The construction took 30 years, between 1732 and 62. In the center stands the statue of god Neptune, being pulled to the sea on his shell-shaped chariot pulled by two winged horses and tritons. Tritons were the young gods of the sea. Nearly 70,000 euros worth of coins are tossed to the fountain each year, roughly 3,000 euros a day. They're picked up every night and the money is donated to the Catholic charity. And of course, Colosseum. Colosseum could accommodate 65,000 spectators. Unbelievable back in the day. Built in the year 72 CE, it took only eight years to construct and financed, sadly and ironically, with plunder of Jerusalem. Sort of a cruel zero sum game here. The Colosseum, also called Amphitheatrum Flavium, was opened by Emperor Titus with games and festivities that lasted 100 days and cost lives of 5,000 animals. Entertainment in Rome was frequently used to distract people from more important matters, such as the fact that you know, lives were tough and through entertainment Romans made sure that no one complained. Emperor Domitian later expanded the amphitheater with extra story, making Colosseum the largest amphitheater in Roman history. Considered one of the seven wonders of the world, throughout the battles that took place in the Colosseum, it estimated that roughly half a million people and one million animals were killed. And now to the more exciting part, we are finally making our way to our boat. We celebrated it with a glass of wine, went for a wonderful show and then checked out our room. We had a lovely cabin with balcony and that's a huge advantage if you enjoy alone time. <laughs> there is a um, room service, so you can order some food in. We spent most of the time outside of the cabin, but there's nothing like checking a sunset from your own balcony <laughs> in the evening. The moon was fantastic that night. We had a buffet dinner and there is an open air sitting spaces as well. So we actually had dinner outside in the open. Overseeing wonderful port was 
an adventure in and out of itself. The next day we were already in Santorini and I started it with a slow breakfast. Santorini, also known as Tira, is a very picturesque island in Greece, in the Aegean Sea, known as the, one of the most stunning places in Europe and a true Greek paradise. According to the legend, the five islands of the ar archipelago are remnants of the former greatness of Atlantis, which has gone underwater. Santorini consists of five islands, and the largest of them is Fira or Tira, which we're visiting today. Santorini has incredible sunsets and sunrises, snow white buildings, blue domed churches and windmills, excellent gastronomy, don't get me started, and stunning beaches. Santorini is a true gem of Greece with fantastic volcanic landscapes, steep cliffs and crystal clear waters. But the most amazing thing of the place is obviously the coastal villages, very comfortably nestling on the edges of the cliffs with breathtaking views over the Aegean Sea. Santorini is a symphony of three colors, blue, white and shades of yellow. According to Greek traditions, white symbolizes faith and justice, blue the sky and this yellow brown the power of nature and the power of volcanoes. The shape of the archipelago is very unusual and explained by a tragedy. It's a result of the eruption of a very large volcano. After erupting, it exploded, leaving behind just five islands. Important tip here, <laughs> number one, in my experience at least, you do not have to book an excursion for Oya because when you arrive to Fira, you can easily take a local boat that will take you there and then with the bus you can come back to Fira and then take the cable car down. All of the tickets will be provided. It will cost you roughly $20 per person <laughs> versus 100, 200 or so on the boat, so worth considering. And yet another of the gorgeous Greek islands, Mykonos. We're still in the Aegean. Mykonos is known for its magnificent beaches and one of the most popular Greek islands, one of the most prestigious resorts in Europe, combining luxury with tradition and history. From here you can easily visit another island, very famous island, Delos is a unique place incredibly rich archaeological site with a huge number of artifacts from different cultures over several millennia. In the 5th century BC, Athenians organized what they called themselves purification on the island. It was forbidden to bury the dead. Later also it was forbidden to give birth in Dallas. After the last purification, every five years a magnificent ceremony was held in honor of Apollo. Delos is one of the most important mythological, historical and archaeological sites here in Greece. Excavations of the island are the most extensive in the Mediterranean. Delos was sacred sanctuary for millennium before Olympian Greek mythology made it the birthplace of Apollo and Artemis. Mother of the children Leta was seduced by Zeus, I mean who wasn't, <laughs> um, God seduced other goddesses, nymphs and mere mortals and when Hera, the, Zeus's wife, found out about her pregnancy, she obviously wasn't very pleased, she expelled Leta from all of the places on earth so she had no place to give birth in. The only place Leta found refuge was Delos, and Delos was not considered part of the earth apparently, because it was discovered by Poseidon, brother of Zeus, to help him and his beloved. Hence Delos, Delos in translation is open or found. Mykonos is known as a very cosmopolitan island, uh, considered one of the great traveling meccas. This is, uh, this is one of the most frequently visited islands in the Aegean Sea. Beautiful nature, again terrific gastronomy, a lot to do, a lot to see. Once again, symphony of three colors predominantly, white, blue and shades of yellow. Beautiful windmills. Windmills appeared in Mykonos for the first time in 16th century roughly and were continuously building in 20th century. As of today there are 16 mills left and they are truly adding the beauty to the island. I'm not sure if I pointed out we were traveling in November, so it was a little chilly but was definitely perfect weather for a hot jacuzzi up on the highest deck of the ship. 
with drinks served <laughs> to the jacuzzi pretty much it was a great relaxing evening then we had uh, had some drinks at the local bar and uh, seafood buffet I, I am a vegetarian but occasionally I do indulge <laughs> Especially when there are no good vegetarian options and the only good ones are seafood ones, so it was good. Yet another of my golden tips. For Mykonos you don't have to order trips at all because the small boats will take you directly to Mykonos. If you just want to check out Mykonos, you don't have to buy an excursion. If you want to see Dallas for that, you don't have to buy excursion either because there are local providers and local boats that take you there and back. That's what we did. And again, it costed us maybe 20 or $30. I don't remember, but definitely insignificant in comparison to the excursion you would have booked on the boat. This morning we had a very luxurious sort of American style breakfast with loads of tasty thingies. I really miss US. I used to live in the US. so. Having a very much an American service and American culture and American atmosphere on board of the ship to me personally was a huge advantage. So I had an American holiday with European ports, which again, to me was the best of both worlds. And we have arrived to the island of Corfo, our Greek name Kirkira. It belongs to the group of Greek islands located in Ionian Sea. Ancient Greek myths tell a wonderful story of the island's creation. Apparently it was founded by the god of seas Poseidon. Having fallen in love with one of the daughters of the rivers, he kidnapped the beauty and settled her on the island that was as beautiful as she was. In honor of his beloved, Poseidon named the island Kirkira, and since then the place has been glorified more than once in more than one legend. Homer sang it in his poems and Odysseus stopped here on the way to Ithaca. The geographic position of the island has long determined its military, strategic and commercial importance, which turned Kirkira into the arena of very turbulent historical events and military clashes. In the 8th century BC, Kirkira became a Corinthian colony and became an important center of trade. However, inhabitants of the island rebelled against the conquerors, united with Athens, concluding a military alliance with the great city. After the collapse of Roman Empire in 395, the island remained the part of the Eastern Roman Empire, which later became the Byzantine Empire. It was during the Byzantine period the island became called Corypho, the Greek for city of mountains, and later in the Latin name arose as Corfo, which it has today. Some of the main delights of the place are kumquats. Kumquats are these wonderful fruits that you can enjoy here in fresh form or in form of liquor or candies or desserts. It's really, really tasty. So then I returned to the boat, had a wonderful evening as always, and then a very relaxing breakfast with the view over the water. Breakfasts were amazing. There were three or four restaurants available. You could have breakfast in different restaurants. In that sense, again, that's one of the best holidays because we didn't have to organize anything. We didn't have to check in and check out of the hotels or think of where to eat and what to do. Everything was organized. And again, that's one of the reasons I love the holiday. For Corfu, you do not need to book an excursion either because it's very easy to get to the downtown Corfu and that's the UNESCO heritage site. I made a mistake. I booked an excursion. I did not like it very much and I missed the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Don't make the same mistake. Next morning, we were in gorgeous Malta. We are visiting its capital, Valletta. Valletta is a city built by gentlemen for gentlemen, or maybe more accurately, by knights for knights. Founded in 1566, Valletta is Malta's capital city and the Europe's smallest, occupying less than one square kilometer. Also its youngest, just over 450 years and southernmost capital cities. Characterized by gorgeous Baroque buildings, the city was named after the Grand Master of Knights of Malta, Jean Valet. Sadly, he never saw the completion of the city he invested so much in. He died of stroke in 1568. He loved his creation, engaging prominent architects and engineers to design the city that would truly stand out from any other in Europe, possibly in the world, and become the hub of political, economic and cultural activity of 16th century Europe. 
Today this beautiful Renaissance city, with its palaces and fortifications, bears testimony to the bygone era and richness of its 450 years of history. Having survived the Great Siege by successfully warding off Ottomans, the Knights of Malta proved that they have made a very wise decision, strategically choosing Valletta as its capital because of its highly defensive position. With great support and funding from Vatican, no surprise there, the Knights built Valletta to fortify Malta as a stronghold of Roman Catholicism, hence the support. Today the entire city of Valletta is classified as UNESCO World Heritage Site, the city size open-air museum, certainly worth a visit. Returning to the boat early, I spent the rest of the afternoon in the jacuzzi <laughs> and a pool and then indulged in a great dinner and partied not the whole night but half a night and party in white we are in messina to be precise we're actually in sicily and going to visit the province of messina it's located in the largest island of italy and mediterranean sicily three capes gives the island a triangular shape which is why ancient greeks called it trina Crea. the coast of sicily is washed by three seas ionian mediterranean and tyrrhenian the most authentic, beautiful, amazing destinations in Europe, place of rich history, traditions with very picturesque nature and very special way of life. Located at the crossroads of Mediterranean trade routes, Sicily has always been one of the most strategically important places. In ancient times, the island was known as the part of Greater Greece and was mentioned, for example, by Cicero, describing Syracuse as one of the largest and richest cities of ancient Greece and Syracuse was in Sicily. Sicily is one of the greatest holiday destinations with wonderful southern Italian flair, but what is more important maybe for some is the association with the legendary godfather. But seriously, well, who hasn't watched the iconic Francisco Polo trilogy, right? Well, I haven't. I haven't seen it. I actually watched it only after I visited the island, but I didn't regret visiting it. So if you've seen The Godfather, if you haven't, I would recommend watching it. It's a great movie. Episodes of the film were filmed in the two neighboring villages, Forza de Agro and Savolka. They're very, very picturesque Sicilian villages that completely charmed me, stole my heart, and I actually really want to return here. So in Sicilian village Savoca that we're seeing right now, the wedding of Michael Carleona took place here. Michael Carleona's first wife lived in Savoca. She was the daughter of the local businessman who owned a bar. So the wedding took place here. The village actually received a decent amount of money after the shooting of the movie and the fathers, the, the city fathers, so to say, spent the money on recreating the beauty of the city and they certainly have done a very good job. The movie was released in 1972 and immediately became a hit. Godfather Trilogy received many Oscars and many great actors starred here, Marlon Brando, Al Pacino and John Cazale, which was super interesting was when we were hearing the guy telling us, talking to people who worked with actual actors, who were sharing their personal account on what kind of people these actors really were. So they were pointing out that both Marlon Brando and John Cazale were super fun and were always engaging in parties and talking to people more or less very pro but Al Pacino was very quiet, very shy, hardly ever spoke to anyone. That was quite interesting to say the least. In the evening we returned to the boat, had a great dinner, always in cake, a drink, went to our favorite pub, listened to our favorite band. To be fair, it was one of the most eventful, one of the most wonderful holidays I've ever had in my entire life because we were so eventful, so well organized and I didn't have to do anything. We arrived to Naples. I've been to Naples before and frankly it didn't impress me very much. That's why I have decided to visit Sorrento. 
Sorrento. It's very close, about an hour drive from the port. Sorrento is a magnificent Italian resort, one of the favorite vacation spots for many Italians and international tourists. The city has its own special energy and that's what people are coming for. Dickens and Goethe used to rest here. The stunning landscapes of Sorrento are depicted in the paintings of Russian painter Shadreen. Unique nature, warm sea, clean air, Italian cuisine, Italian hospitality, Italian language, which is music for the ears, and wine. Very developed infrastructure, that's just a short list of advantages that resort has to offer. The city has been a favorite vacation spot already with the aristocracy since the ancient times, and the evidence to it are the luxurious villas that were built here centuries ago. Greeks named the city Syrian, which means land of the sirens. Perhaps it was Sorrento that Homer described in the poem The Odyssey, steep rocks on which sailors crashed, having heard the singing of the sirens. Later the city went to under the Roman rule. Sorrento passed into the powers of different people from Goths to Byzantines to Turks and in 1860 the city was annexed to Italy and became part of Naples. In the evening we had a really good Indian cuisine and then watched a terrific musical and finished it up with a rock concert in a local pub. Here I have to say that entertainment is truly great. It's definitely a great deal to get all in one package, the accommodation, the transportation, the entertainment, the food. I would say it's a great deal, at least in my experience, given how expensive all of this would be if I were to purchase it separately. So in that sense, cruise actually offers a great advantage to travelers. Next morning I started with a slow cup of coffee (laughs) nothing like coffee in the morning if any coffee lovers out there you guys understand me and just like that we were in Florence Florence, the capital of the Renaissance the pride of Italy one of the most beautiful cities in the world it's located in the spacious valley of Arno River in the north of the country and is an administrative center of historical region of Tuscany from the north to east there are Apennine Mountains that approach Florence, the mountains and the Grail Hills surrounding the city perfectly set off the beauty and really emphasize the beauty of the Florentine churches, luxurious palaces, making the landscapes absolutely incredible. Nowhere else on the planet you will find such an abundance of masterpieces of architecture, sculpture, painting, predominantly of the Renaissance era. Here in Florence, Dante and Machiavelli wrote their immortal works, Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci honed their artistic skills, and Michelangelo and Donatello breathed life into the marble, creating some of the masterpieces of sculpture. Florence has managed perfectly to preserve its historical appearance. To feel the charm of the city, do not limit yourself to visiting museums and art galleries and churches. Actually take your time and really walk through the old streets of the city, experience the atmosphere, breathe in the city. Experience the medieval ages in a quiet walk. Sit in Trattoria, try a panini, a very simple but tasty bread, have a coffee and a pastry somewhere, watch people, especially Italian women, they're fascinating. Just, yeah, just experience the life of the city. And after a couple of hours of drive, we were in Pisa. Pisa obviously is a very famous city in the northern part of central Italy. It is also an administrative center of the province of the same name. An unofficial symbol of the city obviously is the Leaning Tower of Pisa since 1986. The tower itself, the square, the cathedral and the baptistry took a status of UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is believed that the city was founded by Greeks. Then it became Etruscan city and in 193 BC came under the rule of the ancient Roman Empire. Thanks to the significant port of Pisa in the 11th century, it became the first maritime trading powers in the Mediterranean. Success in many wars, participation in the Crusades brought wealth and extensive possessions to the Maritime Republic. Trade and crafts have flourished here, citizens ruled a republic public under the protection of the emperor. In 1284, Pisan fleet unfortunately suffered a crushing defeat from Genoa 
and the port of Pisa was blocked. The city lost most of its possessions, wealth, trade, relations, influence, and power. After numerous internal struggles, Pisa was easily taken over by Florence in 1406. It was our final night on the boat and the fanciest dinner yet. Again, the food was fantastic and it's worth pointing out that Altogether, it turned out to be a bargain, I think, personally. So it's totally worth it. I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, the final night was very busy, loads and lots of entertainment. We went to our favorite pub. Then we went to the final concert where most of the artists were performing together. And there it was, the now the memories, the memories of the great holidays. We packed, we were ready to leave for home back to snow but we loved 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 the cruise i hope the information was useful for you thank you so much for joining let me know if you have any questions don't forget to subscribe and see you soon